AMD's Ryzen 4000 desktop CPUs are looking really fast. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So recently, some confidential internal AMD documents were leaked by a Twitter user who goes by the name of Cyberpunk Cat. And if we go ahead and take a look at these leaked documents, they actually give us a whole lot of information and confirm a lot of information we already knew about the Ryzen 4000 desktop processors that will be coming out very, very soon. So taking a look at this first document here, we can see a lot of details about the Zen 3 microarchitecture that can be found inside of the Ryzen 4000 desktop chips, and more specifically, the CCD and CCX design. So it looks like the top end models will have up to two CCDs potentially and they will have one CCX in each CCD. So what this means is that instead of having two CCXs that are quad cores, they will now be shifting to a design that has one eight core CCX, which should in theory eliminate a lot of the latency in lightly threaded loads. So the big problem with the original Zen 2 design is the fact that there are two quad core CCXs, and this is a problem because if a program needs to go ahead and grab some information off of the cache in the other quad core CCX, or if it needs to use more than four cores, well, unfortunately, it's gonna have to go across the Infinity Fabric to get to that other CCX. And going across the Infinity Fabric, unfortunately, causes more latency to occur. So the big problem with that is that, unfortunately, that means that the gaming performance of the Ryzen chips just wasn't quite as good as what Intel had on offer. Now, this time around, if they're able to eliminate a lot of that latency by shifting over to the eight core CCX, well, most games only use eight cores, so they'll be fine using the full 32 megabytes of cache that should be available in that eight core CCX. And speaking of cache, let's go ahead and move on to the next document where they talk about cache and memory design. So taking a look here, it seems as though each CCX should have up to four megabytes of L2 cache and up to 32 megabytes of L3 cache. So previously, again, where they had 32 megabytes of cache, uh, unfortunately it was pretty much split into 16 megabytes for each CCX. Well, now they get access to the full 32 megabytes, which should help with gaming scenarios scenarios quite a bit. Now moving on to the memory section here, we can see that they have two memory controllers that can take up to four DIMMs in dual channel, and it will natively support up to 3200 megahertz, though of course you can always overclock, and there will be ECC support. And now finally, in terms of the PCIe lanes here, we have the exact same 24 lanes. You get 16 for graphics, you get four for like PCIe devices, such as a M.2 drive, and then you have four going to the IO. Now in terms of clock speed, we don't know quite yet how well these Zen 3 processors are gonna clock. However, several leaks have suggested that the clock speeds will be going up slightly. And my guess is that you'll see at least a 100 megahertz jump. Now, is that 100 megahertz over the XT models or the X models? That's something we don't quite know for sure yet. And it could be possible to even see their top, top chip just barely touch five gigahertz because you know what? Five gigahertz is a huge marketing thing and I could definitely see them shooting for that. So it might actually happen this time around, but I wouldn't expect to see like a huge jump in clock speed. So don't expect any miracles there and it's not gonna give you a ton of performance. All of that performance is gonna come from the redesign of the micro architecture, such as moving Moving to the eight core CCX. Now in terms of core count, I can pretty confidently tell you that they're gonna have their top model being 16 cores on the AM4 socket once again. Now let's talk about performance. And here I have an even newer leak from the website Seeking Alpha, where they grabbed a quote from the AMD senior vice president, Forrest Norad, where he said, quote, and Zen 3, that's at the heart of our next generation products, is also a tremendously powerful architecture and you know, right on the trajectory that we needed to be on. Now, when he says tremendously powerful, we don't know exactly what he means, but it, you know, according to other leaks that I've seen in the past, I think what we'll probably see in terms of IPC from all the architectural improvements that they've made, as well as a slight clock speed bump, is somewhere around 15 to 20 percent uh, performance per clock. So to back that up, I found another leak that recently came out of Hardware Lux, where they supposedly got some slides from AMD, and they stated, "quote The slides also list some performance values." Those speak of an IPC performance increase of plus 15% for integer workloads. For Epic processors with up to 32 cores, AMD wants to achieve a performance plus of 20% compared to the Rome processors with the Zen 2 cores. The single-threaded performance should also increase by plus 20%. 
So yeah, these Ryzen 4000 Zen 3 based processors for the desktop are looking really, really fast. And that 15 to 20% performance increase I was talking about, well, that was in reference to these Epic processors, I believe. So something on the desktop is probably gonna get closer to that 20%. We don't know for sure, but that's probably more likely because some of that performance increase is probably coming from the fact that they're gonna get slightly higher clock speeds. And we know with these 32 and 64 core processors from AMD, they have a harder time hanging on to those higher clock speeds. Whereas on the desktop, if you can push it just a little bit further and you can continue to give it more power, well, you'll probably be able to get some more of that benefit from the higher clock speeds as they won't be dropping in clocks over time quite as much. So yeah, I'm really excited to see these processors and we're getting really close to a release date. In fact, they're gonna be announced on October 8th, which is not too far away at all. And I can't wait to stream it on that day. I definitely will be there. So stay tuned, stay subscribed so that you can watch my live stream when that happens. I'll definitely be trying to get my hands on one of these processors so I can overclock it on my X570 board. I'll try and get, you know, maybe a new motherboard as well, do some sort of stuff with that. But either way, I'll definitely do all kinds of overclocking content. And I'm really excited to see what the Zen 3 microarchitecture has on offer and if they can finally dethrone Intel in gaming performance, because you know what? I think they can, you know, with a 20% increase in performance, I think Intel's 10th generation right now is only like 10% faster in terms of gaming overall. Uh, looking at um, hardware and box numbers, I think it was somewhere around there. It may be a little bit off by a few percentage points, but I believe that's somewhere around where it was. And so if AMD can get a 20% jump and they can, you know, get their latency down, well, that means that AMD, for at least for a short period of time, will have the fastest gaming processor on the market. So I can't wait to get my hands on one, and it will be a historic moment in PC gaming. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about these Ryzen 4000 processors? Are you going to be getting one, or are you just going to wait for maybe DDR5? I'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, NVIDIA and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.